So one thing you have to keep in your mind that VB.net is not case sensitive. So if I click a button, we'll write a code when we click a button. Similarly, when the text is changed, we have to write the code for the event text is changed. See, when I want to see the output, I want to see the output. I doesn't want to come back to my program immediately. In VB.NET, we don't use this bracket. Whereas in C Sharp, we'll use the bracket in the syntax. Hello everyone, myself Evelyn Jacob, working in BCA department, Vidyashram First Grade College, Temple of Excellence, Mysore. So today we are going to discuss the subject C Sharp and .NET in that unit 2. So in the introduction of VB.NET, you have a topic regarding VB.NET. In this session, we will cover the following topics. So the very first is introduction to VB.NET, IDE, then the maneuverings, the toolbar, then how to place, resize, about the properties, window and event procedure. Last is the conditional statements, how to write the conditional statements, control statements and the syntax of it. So the very first topic is VB.NET. What is the full form? VB means Visual Basic. And what about .NET? .NET stands for Network Enabled Technology. Like C Sharp, this is also a programming language. Then, what is the difference? You have the difference in the syntax. It is also object-oriented programming language developed by Microsoft company. So again, it supports what principles? Hoops. Starting from inheritance, encapsulation, polymorphism. So one thing you have to keep in your mind that VB.NET is not case sensitive. So if we come to the features of C Sharp, almost the features are same in where? In VB.NET. This is object oriented language. And where it is used? It is used for designing user interface for what applications? for web application, for desktop application. Then you have a rich library support. When you have rich library support, what you can do is you can use the class of it. You can use the methods. Next, as we already discussed, it is case insensitive language. So you can use inheritance and there is also garbage collection, meaning to say memory is not wasted. So how to write this? The very first step, when we know a programming language, we should know the syntax of it. What is the syntax? So we start with the module. In C Sharp, module was not there. We used to go with a namespace, your module is there. A very simple statement we have already discussed, it is console.writeLine will display the output. So it displays the output. Then what we are printing the message, it is hello world. Any message you can print of your choice. Then at the last, we don't use the flower bracket as in C sharp. We say end sub. Okay. This is the syntax of it. And this is the difference between the C sharp and VB.NET. So VB.NET is completely, again, we say it is object oriented. Then what is right line? We said console.writeLine. When anything begins with a bracket, it means that is a method. So that displays what? Output. If I want to display the output, in C we say printf, whereas here in vp.net or C-sharp we say console.writeLine. Then what is console.readKey, which was the last line of it? It is nothing but this will prevent the screen from running and closing quickly when the program is launched. I want to see the output. I doesn't want to come back to my program immediately. So this statement is used with statement console.readKey. So read key will stay there. Next is creating a shortcut to start vb.net. I want to run the application in my system. So we'll create a shortcut. How to create a shortcut? So this is without installers. You have to keep in mind that is without the installation. So these are the procedure. What is the procedure? First, we'll click the add reference, right? Then what we do is we'll select which tab, 
com tab then we have to search for the windows script host next after that we'll click the windows key it is seen in the keyboard so similarly when we right click the program name then you have to right click that send to option and will create what shortcut but what if i want to install a vb.net say i go for a google search and say download visual studio so that time when we have already installed what are the steps how to create that application the very first step installed now what we should do is we have to open our visual studio then then the menu bar will be there the very first time we'll create a new project so what will we do is select file new project menu then see this is the window for the new project say we say it is a ide what is ide stands for integrated development environment so you can see the projects here listed and what type of application is this the very first time we'll begin with a console application console application is nothing but will run in a terminal so we start with a new project we already started now next these are the important steps we have to keep in mind what to select so this is the project template in the project template we have a list of options followed by what type of application you want what the application you are starting with it may be windows console web application depending on your program you have to select this next the name see everyone after we edit the program or before the program we give a name how we have to give the name whenever i see the name i should understand what program it is so such that you have to give the name suppose it is the conditional statement program i'll give conditional statement so depending on the program you have to give the name you can give your own name also but you don't understand what it is when you see your name so the name to be given to the vb.net application should always be indicative of what the application does understood next the location so i want to store the file in which location which drive will tell you the file system location next so i have opened what windows application so this is exactly when i open a window application this is my ide how it looks it divided into four parts so what i can see i can see a form here and this is the toolbox starting from a text box button what and all you want you just click on it and just drag it you will get a button next this is the solution explorer window so in the solution explorer will tells you what are the files inside this project next this is already a form designer window this is my form so here i can add the controls write the code on the form load or whatever i want i can do inside my form next this is the toolbox see what and all is there list box is there list view is there many controls are there so you can use whatever controls you wish so this is the properties window suppose i add a text box i can give the name i can give or how much length it should take or what color so this or it is in the properties window so it is divided into four parts the solution explorer form designer window then properties window this is the toolbox so introduction to vb.net ide so we already discussed what it is solution explorer will gives you project and files what about form designer form designer will gives you the form in that you can place the controls any controls you want then we have a toolbox where all vb controls will be retrieved then the properties so each control will have its own properties depending on the properties you can change so this is maneuvering the toolbar what it is see if i take a toolbar frequently used such as buttons many tools bar will be there starting from a button or you can take a check box or a radio button so why this toolbar is used it provides easy access to the menu 
So if I take a toolbar button can display an image, text or a combination. So how to add a toolbar into my form? See, to create a tool strip control at the design time, what I already told you all, if I want a button, what will I do? I just drag the same step. What we do is simply drag and drop the tool strip control. Then what is tool strip control? It is nothing but it is a container. What to do without adding its child controls? So how to add the buttons to the toolbar then? What we do is we are going to add three button controls, then three separators and a label control. So three controls we have to add. Then what we do is we'll set an icon for the button control by setting the image property for what? For a button. Next, once you click on the browse option to browse an image, we get the resource editor window that pops up where you have import an image. What is import? We just download the image. Next comes the docking. If you want to see that, you have to go for the ID and the right click on it, you get many options. Then what is docking? See, docking of a control means it is one of the edges of its container any container, whatever you drag. So the control fills certain area of the container. The filling of that container is nothing but docking. So by default dock property of the control is selected none. So the property of the control that is dock is none. So you can change. How to change then? See the dock property of the control class does this. Which class? That is the dock property. You can get or sets the, get means what? I can get the property. Set means you can assign the property. So you can control the borders or dock to its parent control. Then how to use them? Using Visual Studio Design, the properties window, the properties what you have seen on the right side of it, you can set to the docking mode of the control. So whenever you go to a Visual Studio, you can try this docking. So I want to again dock the property. How I can dock? This first is select the control in the designer. In the properties window, you have the arrow to the right of the docking property. Next, you should select the button that represent the edge of the container. So See, always I do docking in my design view, right click on it, set it to the properties. But what if I can add this docking in my code? So line a piece of code, what is that? So docking in the code, in my CS code. So set the dock property on a control. How to set? We already told that we'll right click on the button and set the properties. But in the coding, if I do what it is the syntax, the syntax is button one dot dock. If your button name is button one, then you call with that name dot dock. Then we'll say dock style dot write. Then what is undocking? So already docking is done, but I don't want docking. So we'll go for undocking. Then what option should be selected? No docking means value will be none. So this you can see. So it is value is none. Where did I get the dock property? In my properties window. When I click on that control, when I go to a properties window, I can see a dock name and the value will be none, means undocking. So now I have to place and resize. Place means we already know it is dragging something or placing a control, but resize means changing its position or maximizing, minimizing, it comes in the resizing the window. First, how to do it? For that, you have to install what? Visual Studio. First, we'll open a Visual Studio, right? On the start window, you choose a create new project. Again, we're going to create a new project. Then for this, we have to use what application? It is form application. So click OK. Then the window form will be placed inside your IDE. So now we'll resize the form. A form is there, I want to extend. How to extend? Simple, you click on the mouse, you just drag it. Same procedure, 
So when a form is created, the size and location is initially to default value. So it's already set to default value, it will be minimum, but you can maximize also. How to maximize? Then what is the default size? It is width and height, that is 800 into 500 pixels. So after adding the new form, the size of the form is set to two different ways. I can increase the size in two different ways. First, what you have to set is with the size scripts in the designer. We already discussed what we do by dragging by either the right edge, bottom edge or the corners. We usually drag in the corners. So like that you can resize. So I, usually we don't make it small, we usually make it big so that our controls are placed appropriately. The second way you can resize the form while the designer is open. Right? How it is? Through the properties. First you should select the form, then find the properties pane, scroll down, then you can expand it. So usually we'll go to the first one, just drag and if you extend, it's enough. This is the second point of it, how you can resize what? Your windows. We'll resize in code. Even in the code also you can resize. What is the code then? See, designer sets the starting size of the form. You can resize. See, suppose you want to resize. I can add a button underscore click. What is a click? Click is a event. So button one is the name of my button which is placed. So here you can see size is equal to new size 250 comma 200. The height and width is specified. Next, so what is objects here? When I say object, I say instance of a class is object. But is that same here too or something else is there? So an object in a VB program is a component. For this component means we say it is a control, right? So such as form, even form is an object. Then if I say a button, list, checkbox, whatever is there in your toolbox that it's contained in the form. See, I can't take a button as it is. I should place my button inside my form. So form is nothing but it is a component, right? So every object has its properties. If I take a text box as a properties, you can change the color, you can pick some maximum length. It has also an event, right? So Say one property will have same. What it is? It is the name. So every object or every component or control will have name. Next, writing an event procedure. So I already discussed. So every object will have the name. What it is? It is default name. When you drag a button one, the name is button one. When you drag second button, the name will be button two. But you can change the name. Where shall I change? In the properties window. So you can say type of the object is button, label, text box. And it is prefixed by this. See button is prefixed by btn, label is lbl, txt is text box. Depending on that, I can give some name. Say btn clear, lbl title. So with three letters, I can know what it is because it is a prefix of button, text box and label. So now it is an event. See, when I write something or when I click from here, so an event has happened. So that is event is nothing but action. So what is event? See, if, when a program is running, what the user do? The user can do many things. He can move the mouse, click the mouse, or enter the text. These are all what? Events. Events are nothing but actions. Each of these actions are called event. Next. So each event has two components. So it might be click and the type etc. So what are the events then? So in Visual Basic, what is click? It is for mouse button. What is double click? It is also for the mouse button. Then in the mouse, I can give click. If it is double click, what is the event? DBL. So it is also prefixed with DBL click. Then 
if you focus on the text box or anything means make the cursor to move there then what is the event enter similarly you have lot of events if you lost the focus the event will be leave when you change the text box contents or when you type inside a text box what is text box is something like this you will enter your name right so what event will be there it will be text changed so similarly you have many events depending upon the actions so the code that performs action in response to the events is return in a event procedure then even procedure contains statement that executes when a particular event occurs so if i click a button we'll write a code when we click a button similarly when the text is changed we have to write the code for the event text is changed then what is data types we have already discussed in c sharp but same definition but different in syntax so what is a data type so data type is used to define the type of a variable so when i say it is a integer i should have only integer value then i can know oh, this num variable it is of type integer so a data type refers to which type of data or value it can take then what is the syntax so you should keep in mind c sharp and vb dot net syntax are both different but the concept is same so how to say we use the keyword dim variable underscore name as as and data type the syntax see it is different from the c sharp we don't use dim here and we don't use as 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 so these two keywords are used in which language in vb.net we already know what is variable name it defines the name of the variable then what is the data type it can be any data type say integer character so float double whatever it is so here is an example how we'll define the data type after the syntax is this the example so we'll begin with the module data type this sub main it is the entry of the program then we'll define the data type what are the data types see we say dim b as byte so b is of type byte and we have already assigning when i say equal it is nothing but assignment next dim num as integer that is also 5 but here we have not assigned anything so no assignment we have only declared we have declared si as single db double then what is this we have declared as date next c as char and string so many data types we have declared we should understand how we have to declare so here is a example what we did is we have there we have only declared and here we have assigned so if number is integer we'll assign 20 similarly what are the data type depending on the values we have assigned see at the last you have hello friends how would i know i should use hello friends i have to check what data type it is it is string data type so i have used string what is string it is nothing but characters so then no flower bracket you have to say end sub end module so this is the major difference between c sharp and what vb dot net so next we'll go for the conditional statement so what conditional statement is we discuss in a c sharp the unit 1 in whatever difference is there is it same or we can have some major difference because we are we don't use this flower bracket we always say end end if end while end for so that is the major difference so vb dot control statement what is control statement it is nothing but are the statement that controls the execution of the program so control statement can be many we don't want to execute continuously we'll control in somewhere by giving some condition right so if the condition is true it will execute otherwise what happens it will go and come out of that condition so if i want to say conditional statements what are the conditional statements it is used in our vb.net it is if then statement if then else if then else if select case what is select case 
it is similar to a switch statement. If you are familiar with switch, select case also same, only syntax difference is there. Next is nested selected case. Nested means you have more than one. So, we will begin with each one of it with a syntax. So, what it is? So, if I say if then else if, see if then else if. See in C sharp we would have write if open the bracket code or go for a else. But here no brackets then you have a keyword say then. It is something like if then end if or in the middle you can say else. So how it works? So very first I have to declare a integer say where one has integer. See notice the syntax of it. Next, console.writeLine will be a statement, just a printf statement is given. What we have given? Input the value of var1. So, I should read the value from my keyboard. So, console.readLine is nothing but it is a scanf statement in C, okay, reading the value. Next, if var is equal to 20. See, I am already assigned var1. How much? 20. Then keyword is used. See, two keywords are there. One is if, another is then. So, we all know if condition is true, what happens? This statement will be printed. So, entered value is equal to 20. Suppose, if the var1 is less than 50, that is we have not written if, we have written else if. If this is true, this statement or if it is false, this statement will be executed. This what is this statement tells entered value is less than 50. Okay. Next, you have one more condition that is else if where one is, it is two condition, both can be or any one can be. So, console.writeLine entered value is greater than 100. So, again else statement starts and last you have to end if. So, in this condition we have seen it is greater or equal to. Usually if I give 100, 100 will be equal to 100. So, this condition is satisfied. If I give 200, 200 is greater than 100. So, this condition. So, if any one condition is satisfied, this is printed. So, last you have to end the sub, end the module. So, anywhere we did not see any braces, that is flower bracket is not there in a vb.net. So, next, next is select case statement. So, in the select case, in the right side, you can have the picture of it. First, we will give the expression and we will check whether it is matching with the case one. If it is matched, means if it is same, it is equal this statement 1 will be executed. If in this case 2, if it is matched, then this statement. Similarly, if nothing is matched, then what happens? It will execute the default statement. If 1 is executed, what happens? We say break. So, it comes out of the select case. It is not switch, it is select case. Then this will be executed. So, meaning to say, Default will be there in our select case or a switch. How we have to write this? See, it is import system. In C sharp, we were using this keyword in C sharp. So, it will begin with the main. Then what we do is each time we have to declare the variable wherever we are using. If I say days as string, days is Thursday. We have assigned so, if today is Thursday or tomorrow Thursday or anything, simply we are assigning it as Thursday. Then we will begin with the syntax select case. So, this is the expression where we have discussed. So, it is days. So, I have to match it is Thursday. If it is Monday, we will say today is Monday. If it is Tuesday, today is Tuesday. When I get the term Thurs, it should match with my variable days. So, days has thus. So, that and this will be printed again, but we know it is Thursday, but still we have continued for Friday, Saturday. Okay. Then, so 
instead of default we say case else you have typed something wrong. So other than these days something spelling mistakes is there. We already have a message for you that is you have typed something wrong. Then no need to close the bracket we say end select. Then we have printed the message you have selected this within the flower bracket 0 indicates the first number that is days will be printed. You have selected Thursday. Like any press any key to exit then last statement is your read line close all the sub band module with the keyword end. So we finish with the conditional statement now we will have a look on the loop. So do while loop for next loop for each loop and while end loop. Almost same we have studied in C sharp but difference in what in our syntax. So we look only to the diagram of it. So do loop we already discussed but still we have a revision of it. Do means whatever the condition first do this. You have to execute do at least once then depending on the condition will execute more than that. So you can have do loop by condition. So what is my syntax? First I have to write do here then is my code then I will end with the loop while condition. So this is in the vb.net code right. Then this is the conditional code depending on the condition if it is true again this will go to the condition again it will check for the condition until where until the condition is false. If the condition is false it comes out of the loop. This is about do while. Next for next. So in C sharp we used to write for say int i is equal to 0, i less than say 5 semicolon i plus plus close the bracket and open the flower bracket and we should write the code here. But here is the different syntax. How we will write? We do not use any flower bracket we say for you can say any counter or i then we will write next. This is in vb.net. Okay, the syntax is changes but the loop and how it works it is same for both. So I will initialize the counter variable. Instead of i we have taken counter. Next check the condition is true. Everywhere you have to check the condition is true. If it is true what it does? It executes the code. Then what happens? It should update the counter. Say first time i will be 0 and it will immediately increment and then again it will go to check the condition. Until where it happens? Until it is false. If it is false we say it is stop. Stop means come out of the loop. Next is for each loop. What is for each loop? We discussed there in our C sharp. So in for each loop will work for a collection. What is a collection? Collection is nothing but it can be array or list. Here no need to increment and all directly you will write for each collection. This is the syntax and as usually you know you say next. So it will check in a collection. It can be a array or a list. So first we have to see in the collection if that elements is there. If suppose in your array there is no elements then no need to execute the statement right. So that is why we say for each collection we check until it is true until elements are there. If no elements are there what happens? It comes out say it is false comes out of which loop for each loop. Next we discussed do while then it is while and loop. So while starting only is the condition. See it is something like this while condition end while. So here in vb.net we do not use this bracket whereas in c sharp we will use the bracket in the syntax. So if the condition is true what happens as usual? The code is executed if it is false will come out of the loop. But in the while loop you should see such a that each time your counter should be incremented. 
because in for loop you have already a condition to increment here separately you have to increment which the counter or any variable which are taken so arrays in arrays you have the classification single dimension multi dimension same concept but different in syntax so what is array array is a linear data structure it is a collection of data elements of similar data type if i say integer array it is integer only so similar data types so each data item is called the element of the array so we say array of 0 we say it is a element that is each data item is called element so it is a fixed size of sequentially arranged elements so how it looks see the array index starts from 0 then if i say 9 my last index will be n minus 1 if n is 9 so 9 minus 1 is 8 that is it is index 8 so this is the representation of a array then we discuss syntax is changed here in vb.net how is the syntax look here again the dim wherever declaration is used in vb.net use the keyword dim dim then it is the array name this is also a keyword then you have to specify the data type so since it is there a bracket which indicates it is a array so stores only integer values for that i have to declare what array integer array so dim num as integer or dim num5 as integer see the difference is here we have not specified the size whereas here we have specified the size how many elements are there five elements so what are the types of array in vb.net fixed size array see five is fixed in that you have multi-dimensional array jagged array dynamic size array if it is fixed array we don't change the size of the array if you want to change the size of the array then go for dynamic size array so fixed size array has the name itself tell the size of the array is fixed remains the same and doesn't change during the program execution if once if i declare it is 10 it is 10 only it cannot change in the program execution then what is the syntax syntax is same what you have discussed there dim num 5 as integer so it is a integer array then what about multi dimensional array if it is not single dimension say a matrix rows and columns it is what multi dimensional array so vb.net allows multi dimensional array then what is multi dimensional array is an array with more than one subscript or dimension if it is single dimension it is single dimensional array if it is more than one dimension it is multi dimensional array then if the syntax should be more than one so it is separated by comma so again the same syntax dim array of 10 comma 20 as integer so this completes your second unit for the next session we'll start with the third unit until then take care thank you